shoes. I would wear that. What are trainers made out of? Fabric. Plastic. Key parts of trainers are made using plants. Are they? <laughs> Eventually. That's right. There's the laces and the soles. What kind of plants? Rubbery. <laughs> I think rubber comes from a plant. Rubber is amazing stuff. It's strong, stretchy, waterproof, and can withstand high temperatures, and is super resistant to heavy impacts, making it the perfect material to use in sports equipment, like trainers, tires, goalkeeper's gloves, shuttlecocks, and even basketballs. I'm confused how that gets made into rubber. Rubber comes from the sap of the rubber tree, whose natural habitat is in tropical regions. Some rubber is grown in South America. Ugh, lovely. When rubber plantations are cultivated in a responsible and careful way, they're home to a rich biodiverse world. When the seeds of the rubber tree are ready, they explode, sending the seeds flying into nearby rivers and streams. The floating seeds might be gobbled up by birds and monkeys, which scoop the seeds out of the water. The seeds are also eaten by fish. Black piranhas and tambaki split the seed shells with their razor sharp teeth and eat the kernel inside. The fish help spread the seeds to new areas where new rubber trees can grow. Predators like river dolphins and caiman love to eat these fish, making the rubber tree part of an important food chain and a whole web of life. If you take one part away, the whole thing can collapse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even like mushrooms. Trainers have been made from mainly leather and plastics that can often have a harmful impact on the environment. Scientists are developing new alternative materials that can be used in trainers and work just as well, if not better. These funky shoes are made from pineapple leather. Shoes are made out of pineapple. What? And there are other alternative materials like mushrooms, cork and castor beans. Poison. Breaking news, deadly beans. Some of the most dangerous beans in the world, poisonous castor beans, are being used to make trainers. That's right, Lacey. Originating from tropical Africa, it has been reported that they can grow between 10 and 13 metres tall. Tony, is that about as high as a double-decker bus? About three of them, Lacey. The oil from the castor beans can be used to make a material for the trainers that is durable, tough, but ultra-lightweight. Castor beans have a special relationship with hundreds of fungi and microbes in the soil that help them grow. Lacey, that really is biodiversity in action on a tiny scale. Could these deadly beans really be responsible for some stylish footwear? I know I'm getting a pair. Me too. I'm Tony Darnell. And I'm Lacey Schubert, and you've been watching News, News on, on the, the Ground. ground. Cork is another amazing material now being used in trainers. Cork is grown in cork oak forests in the Mediterranean. What's clever is cork can be harvested from the trees without damaging them so that they can continue to host some amazing biodiversity. An incredible range of life can be found here, with over a hundred different species of plants crammed into one square meter, and it becomes home to many different birds and animals. Virtually, the entire common crane population chooses the cork oak forests to shelter in winter. Ooh, that's so cool. I didn't know that. Thanks to a huge variety of plants like castor beans and cork trees, we can have things like trainers. A rich, biodiverse world allows us to have some of our favourite things. So remember, next time you're putting on your trainers, just think, it's all thanks to some pretty amazing plants. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit thumbs up if you liked this video, subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comments what videos you'd like to see from us next. To find out more about biodiversity, check out the links in the description below.